Today you're going to need the following supplies. A paper plate, a plastic knife, concealer that matches your skin, Elmer's school glue, glue stick, this can be the purple kind or white. Maron blood splatter. You could also use red face paint. Maron blood gel. Black face paint. This is DFX in black. Red face paint. This is DFX in red. A beauty blender. An eyeshadow palette that has the following colors, like a maroon color and a yellow color maybe a purple. Any eyeshadow doesn't have to be Jaclyn Hill. And an eyeshadow brush. You're going to need something for water and any sort of um, brush to be used with the face paint crafting brush. This is low Cornell. So the first thing you want to do is take your Elmer's glue stick, open it up, pump it up just a little bit, get your paper plate and your plastic knife, and you're just going to Take some thin layers and cut them and put them right on the plate. All right, I think that's probably enough. Basically, what we're going to do is mush them all together. Make sure you get it nice and pliable. Get as many chunks out as you can. Just gonna wipe my hands. Now we're gonna take our black DFX face paint, dip your brush in the water, tap it off, just a couple dabs to get some black on there. We don't want it too full of black. And then we're going to dab it in the water one more time. Take our red DFX face paint and swirl it around till we get a nice dark red maroon color. And from there, we're going to decide where we want our wound to be. So I'm going to use right here. Don't make it too big. I'm gonna touch it lightly, then press down, make it a little wider, 
and then again lift your paintbrush slightly to make it thinner on each end. Okay, so we have the base down. Now in order to hold our wound in place so it doesn't fall off, we're going to use Elmer's washable school glue. We're gonna take just a dab. One, two. Two dabs. I'm going to take the back of my paintbrush and I'm just going to push it around. Don't go on top of the red, just around the red to make sure our wound is going to stay put. Get it nice and smooth down because when it dries, it will show if it's too chunky. Okay, smooth those edges. There we go. Don't worry if you get a little bit of the red paint in there because we're gonna cover it up anyway. So now we just need to let that dry you can use a blow dryer to quicken up the drying process. So that's what I'm going to use. All right, looks pretty good, not too tacky. Okay, from here, you're going to take your knife and take a little bit of that glue stick. We're gonna go around, around your red face paint. You can leave it a little bit chunky because we want it to be raised up right on the, the outer part of the red face paint. Make sure when you're doing this, you don't cover up the red face paint. We want to go just around it. And always kind of push it back a little bit if you get too close. So we want it to look kind of bulky right around the outside of the face paint to look like the skin was ripped open. So I'm going to take my knife and kind of push those edges up. And then from there, make sure everything's connecting. And we're going to take the outer edges and we're going to smooth those down. So you could take the side of your knife that's smooth, not with the ridges. And kind of smooth that down right onto your skin. If you have too much, you can always scrape it up and put it back on your plate. All right. So 
So this is what we're looking like. You can always take the back of the knife, kind of open that wound up a little bit, or however you need to manipulate the glue to make it look more realistic. So from here, I have my wound the way I want it to look. We're going to dry it. And the best way to do that is with a hair dryer. I'm going to set the hair dryer on high, but I'm going to put it on the cool so it doesn't burn my hand. Okay, so after a few minutes, the glue doesn't feel as tacky. So I think it will be ready to put some concealer on it. You can always clean up your edges too out here if you have some glue. Okay, so this is what we're going with. So from here, I am going to use my concealer or foundation, whatever you have. This is the one I'm using that matches my skin tone. Gonna take it, put some on the back of my hand. From there, I'm gonna use my beauty blender and use the back of it. Put some concealer on and dab onto the purple. Just on the outside. You don't wanna go right on top of it and into the middle. I'm just gonna dab around the outside and make sure when you're doing this, you kind of bring it out onto your skin to make it blend better. So it will look more realistic. If you have some cracks that you can't get to, that's okay. I'll add a little bit more. I'm gonna use the point of the Beauty Blender to try to get in there. Be careful along the edges because you don't want those edges to go down and flatten out your wound. Remember, bring it kind of out and around on your hand to make it look like it's part of your skin. The good thing about using the purple Elmer's glue is that it gives that bruised effect under, underneath the um, concealer or foundation. Just gonna use a little bit more to try to get right on the edge of that wound. Be careful because it's still very pliable. If I pull on it, it will move. So you gotta be very careful not to pull it off. All right. So that's what we're looking like. The next step is hair on blood splatter. You can also use red face paint if you don't have this. I'm just going to open this up, 
and place some on my plate. While we're at it, I'm gonna open up the Maron Blood Gel. This is very thick. It's to look like coagulated blood. So I'm gonna put that on my plate. You only need a little bit of it. So I'm gonna take my paintbrush. I'm gonna take the blood splatter, the lighter one. I'm gonna go in the middle. Just kind of dab it in. It's okay if you get it on the edges of your wound. I'm just gonna put it just a little bit on the outside edges like that and then we're gonna go in and take a little bit of this coagulated blood it's very goopy and kind of put it in on the edges if I can it's very sticky you could also use the back of your paintbrush for this which I think I'm gonna do Be careful because your glue is still um, pliable and can move very easily. Okay, so from here, I am going to take my eyeshadow. And I'm going to use a little bit of, I think we'll start with the purple. So a deeper color purple, just a tiny bit. And I'm gonna go kind of on the outside edges now we already have a little bit of a purple look because of the purple Elmer's glue that we used. So we just only wanna do a little bit right around the edges. And then I'm gonna go in with the dark red maroon color. Take that on my brush and also Go around the edges as close as you can to the wound. And then from there, I'm gonna use the other side of my brush, my eyeshadow brush, and pick up some yellow. And I'm gonna go on the outside of the purple and put some yellow there. So this is gonna give the effect of a bruised look. Now from here, I'm gonna go back to the Mayron blood splatter Gonna spray a little bit on the plate. Take some, go back in on the edges. See how I got a little concealer on the edges? We don't want that. We want it to look bloody. Just 
kind of go ahead and go around the edges. The Mehram blood splatter gives it this shiny, fresh wound look. Then from there, I'm going to take the bottle itself. It has a spray top on it. Be very careful when you spray this because it will stain your clothes. I'm gonna very gently spray. Tap just a little bit around. And that's it. It's really cool when you use the stick glue because you can build it up and it gives dimension. Not sure if you can see it. See that? It looks deep and gross. And that's it. You can do this on pretty much any part of your body. Just be careful on your arms if you have arm hair because the glue will pull your arm hair out. That's why I chose my hand. Okay, that's it. That concludes your tutorial. Thank you for watching. Good luck.